Hi there, how are you doing friends? This is Bill McDonald, the writing doctor. And some of you sometimes ask me, why is it that students get such low writing scores when they get to fourth, seventh, ninth, and 10th grade? Well, what happens exactly is that they'll tend to fall between the cracks or the gaps that happen when all we have in the other grade levels is a lot of practice in reading and math, social studies, science, other subjects, but those subjects are being questioned in a multiple choice format and not an open-ended format. So I want to use my new folders today to help us deviate from that issue where we need to start asking open-ended questions so that when students are answering them, some of the questions that we get asked are open-ended and not multiple choice. So let me show you my new folders. I, to, again, to help some of you, I clicked on share screen. On that part, you'll see basic, advanced, and files. I'm going to click on content from say, say second camera, share, and there you have my folder with me in the corner. These are my advanced English language arts writing folder. Now, it does say English language arts, but I was worried that many of your students who are transitioning in Texas from Spanish to English, we're not quite ready for the overwhelming vocabulary that they might receive. So for only expository, your students will be able to see the Spanish guide on the left and the English guide on the right. These are on my website under the most popular English products. So when you go to www.therightprescription.com, you'll be able to find these folders and I can send you a set of 25. And they're really cool because they have the process of expository here on the left, the editing plans, we'll use these monkeys in a moment, on the right with cups, the revising on the lower right with arm, add, remove, replace, move, on the bottom, you will see the alphabet and print cursive, several examples of different types of figurative language, and even a way to practice dialogue in several different ways. And what many students like is that it has a glorified thesaurus inside with lots of big words that are way overused and better choices to choose from. And I've noticed that a lot of students will be willing to use my folder, but they're not willing to open up a dictionary or a thesaurus. So I want you to notice the big difference between these folders and all the folders I've ever sold before. You can get these as a digital copy as well. Uh, just email me at the email address there, writing underscore doctor. He's Fix my focus, writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com. Uh, but the important thing is short, red, answer, yellow, responses, green, or in Spanish, respuestas, cortas, abiertas, open ended questions. So, what color is the sentence? What is the question? Red. And since it's a sentence, I want you to notice that. These little monkeys that you can buy at Dollar Tree, and they come in little packages like this. There are three blues, three yellows, three reds, and three greens. Okay, so it allows any teacher to do basic expository because expository is explanatory when you're explaining. So if you ask a question about a particular topic, a particular TEEK, a skill that the kids are learning, instead of saying A, B, C, D for odd numbers and F, G, H, J for 
even numbers, then let's raise the standard in all grade levels and all subjects and say, we are going to ask you an open-ended question. What we want is to turn the red light into a yellow light by requiring you to give us an open-ended answer that starts with a capital C. C, this is a cup here, a trophy cup, that has correct subject agreement called usage. U has an ending punctuation P. So if your kids can do that, and they do a good job with it, they can win these little cups that they sell for a dollar at the dollar tree. They sell them in sets of four in the birthday party section. So if they can do that, well, then what we have so far is the red monkey was what was the question? Capital. What is the question? Question mark. And there was a little ball inside the cup. And I bounced the ball on the floor to represent stop signs. Because the street is stopping. The signs is stopping. What is the answer? Question mark. And if you want to go green, then you say to the students, in order to go from a one to a two or a three, depending on how well you explain, what is the answer to your question? So there's the three colors. I'm going to come out of the screen right now. And I'm going to go ahead and show you using my background. The question said, what is the question? Well, I'm going to ask a question about something easy. What is your favorite place? Well, you can see from my background that I love golf, but sometimes it's where you're at that makes the location. My favorite place and that's red in case the screen is confusing it the yellow is my favorite place is a golf course that is next to the ocean and or some beautiful mountains in the background okay and I could explain, I could possibly give an example. Where is there an example? And the hard thing about using green monkeys is that the green screen kind of messes with the color of the monkeys when you're using the green screen. So just remember that we have red, we have yellow, and we have green. So if you give an example of a place that has a golf course that has blue water, uh, beautiful water. You know, they say that in uh, many oceans, you can see 50 feet underwater. In fact, my wife and I, when we went to Costa Nel for our anniversary, we could see like 50 feet, 100 feet underwater. And in South Padre Island, where we're from, you can't even see your own feet. So that's not too great. Now, all of that, uh, was part of my explanation. So I say that in a place where the water is so crystal clear blue that you can see 50 to 100 feet underwater. Now, because it's not just the background, I'm going to mention that, but I also want to talk about what I had said earlier. It would really help if there were some beautiful mountains in the background so that you can enjoy the scenery as you're golfing. And all this is turning green to greener to green us because I'm trying to explain the golf courses will hopefully have beautiful trees and flowers from many different types just to enhance the beauty. 
period. Now, I'll add a few more. I ran out of green, but that's basically how to go from a red light to a yellow light to a green light. The first green could be giving an example. And then the next greens, because they sell them three for a dollar, I ended up using two packages for this. How do you explain yourself what you mean? Uh, and as we mentioned in the last video, you can use the W's, but if at least kinder could answer the question and first grade could say, at least give me an example of what you mean. Second grade could explain with one sentence. Third grade could explain with two. And fourth grade could explain with three or more. All of a sudden, we call that my grade or more will get a good score. And this is a great visual to help students and teachers see the connection that comes between uh, using monkeys to connect sentences. And what I like about it is that you can see here that um, I'm going to switch to none so that you can actually see the monkeys. So there you go. There's the red ones, the yellow ones, and the green ones that I use. And that's my green screen behind me so that I can pretty much go to the internet and look for any high definition uh, pictures and allow you to see uh, something specific in the background. And I chose that background because uh, golf course was my favorite place. So I beg you as administrators, principals, uh, writing, uh, curriculum directors, anybody who's charge of making that decision, I really want to encourage you. You don't have to necessarily get mine, but make sure that every single test from now on has your kids to re 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 require them, require your students to have op open-ended questions with open-ended answers that they have to do their best to explain. And the older the grade level, the more they should spend explaining. So that's what I really like. For those of you that are Spanish, the same thing. Que es la pregunta? Rojo. ¿Qué es la respuesta? Amarillo. A explicar su respuesta, verde. En lo más que explicas, lo más uh, changos que van a tener. Now, let's say the student has one, two, three, four, five monkeys. Let me show that to you. They have one, they answered the question with the yellow. They give an example. They explained it with some sentences. Let's say they do all that with one period. Well, what you might do visually is say, I'm going to remove all of, all of the monkeys except one because even though you have four or five sentences, you only explain them with one period. So even though you have five sentences, sentences that have one period are only one sentence. And so the conventions grade, the grammar grade would, would go down because of that response. And that's what we have happening a lot. I was working with some high school teachers last year up in, near El Paso, and they told me that we have entire high school students writing a whole page with one period. So we've got to start helping that in all of the non-writing grades. And since we're all going to be having as English language arts, Spanish language arts teachers in in uh, fourth and third grade, all the way through eighth grade are going to be having to do that in the reading test. Why wait until next year? Let's go ahead and start editing and revising and all the way down uh, as low as you feel like your students can go. So it won't kill your students. And especially it won't hurt your, your teachers to say, you know what, at least one out of every question on the test 
has to be open end to where I take the time to read it. And the lower the grade level, like I mentioned, the less the quantity of writing there's going to be. But we we do not live in an open ended on a multiple choice world. We live in a, an open ended world until we get into classrooms where that's what's hurting our students where they have to be able to answer questions. So I hope that you take heed to my suggestion and that you use the use rest of the rest of this year to start improving the quality of writing by requiring open ended responses in all grade levels, all classrooms and even all subjects. If they're not writing with a pencil, I can ask answer your questions with my mouth, but I shouldn't be taught how to answer that question in a complete sentence with my mouth, not just one or two word answers. So hopefully that will help you guys. God bless. Share this video if you like it and feel like it's helpful. Uh, have a wonderful day with you and your students and your family, your friends.